Welcome to the backyard everybody. It is such a beautiful day out here, but I actually found a spot in the shade at some Almost too beautiful in the sun if you know what I mean. I got some beer and some mead from a uh, viewer and he is named Tracy and he did not send this to me. He drove this stuff over. He lives in St. Paul. So he just drove it on over and we met and talked and uh, he gave me two bottles of this Potter's beer. Man does that look nice. I drank one the other day uh, and I'm having the second one today. Oh man, it smells so nice. It really smells familiar to me because I've made this beer. So I wonder if that has to do with uh, the yeast, which is uh, 3787Y yeast Trappist High Gravity. Um, I think I do get a little bit of a, a, a indescribable a Belgian character off the nose. It's kind of a sweetness. Um, And when I had this beer the other night, I realized that it's just a clean beer, um, well made. He takes very detailed notes, which he photocopied. He did a uh, step mash, which is uh, interesting, not something that I have done uh, in a long time. Uh, I did them years ago, and then I don't know if I saw benefit, so I just kind of stopped doing them. But this beer has 10 pounds of Belgian Pilsner malt. And then one ounce German tradition, boil 60 minutes, half ounce Zaz, 60 minutes, half ounce Zaz, 10 minutes, I think it says. Um, gravity was 1057 down to 1010. He says it's like 6% alcohol. Um, I think he might have had the fermentation temperature in here. I'm not seeing it right now, but I think he, I think we, ambient temp 60. That was actually for the starter. At any rate, it's, if you've made a potter's beer and you've made this type of recipe, I know it's typically a little bit lower in gravity. I tend to make mine a little bit more like 1050 instead of like 1040, um, which you can make it and then just have it be 4, 4.5% four or something like that. It's just, um, there's a tiny bit of hot bitterness. You get a little bit of bitterness from the yeast. Um, not excessive, of course, but... Uh, Otherwise, it's just sort of a clean Belgian Pilsner malt. It's actually a little bit dry. I wonder if using, I may have sometimes used domestic Pilsner malt. I wonder if there's a difference when you use like the Dingman's, uh, if that's what you use for Belgian Pils, if it gets a little drier somehow and the US maybe is a little sweeter. Could also have to do with um, the Final Gravity 1010. I don't know if his, um, uh, starting to mash low and raising it up made it more fermentable but uh, as I told him in an email this is a very nice beer um, it's very clear he bottle conditioned it so I left uh, some of it in the bottle so great job on that one um, it tastes just like a potter's beer to me as far as what I think of as that style which has kind of only come onto my radar in the last few years this is a mead uh, cherry Melomel. Mel. It's not even quite a year old and truth be told it sounds like it would probably benefit from some aging but um, you know just because I have the one bottle and I have this crappy corkscrew. I'll edit this back in when I get it open. Whew. Uh, I almost did not get that. This is a crappy... Oh, it's bent. That did not help me. Anyway, it sounded like it may be even better to age this longer, but um, I just have the, the one bottle, and I just thought I would do my initial comments now. If I meet up with him in a year and he has some more, maybe I'll get another sample. Oh, it is so nice looking. Wow. He says the original gravity of this, it's a tart cherry. Oh, it smells wonderful. It really does have a pretty good noticeable cherry character on the nose. Um, almost 18 pounds of honey. Lavlin, uh, Lalvin 71B Narbonne yeast. I like using that yeast for meads myself. Use the Kurt and Kathy's yeast nutrient blend. Four packets. Some Nutrifirm energy. Total 
12 pounds of tart cherries. You definitely get um, a cherry flavor, which is nice. Um, I think he said he estimated the alcohol was like 17%. Um, and he entered it in a contest, I think, or at least got some feedback from somebody, and they kind of commented on the, the high kind of alcohol tone of it. Um, I'm not getting hit with that a lot right now. It is kind of just out of the fridge. My personal opinion is I like my meads somewhat sweet, a little bit sweeter maybe than um, some people. So I would like this to be a tiny bit sweeter, but that could just be a preference. Otherwise, I really like the fruit character. 12 pounds, I assume it was 5 gallons. So 12 pounds is is all right. I guess that's, you know, about around two pounds per gallon, which is uh, a pretty good ratio. I know you can use more, of course, um, like the, uh, if you're going to be a award-winning fruit mead maker, you're going to, like, pay a lot of money and um, uh, put tons of fruit in there. So, this is uh, not even quite a year old. Um, I think it tastes really nice. Um, I'm not getting the hotness of al alcohol. It smells nice. You get the tart cherry on the nose and in the flavor. My only thing is, if this was my own mead and I was tasting it before packaging, I would probably back sweeten it a little bit more. At this point, you've probably maxed out the alcohol tolerance of the yeast, which this strain is like 14 to 15 percent. So it shouldn't ferment any more honey, and that's kind of how I make them. So I kind of max out the yeast uh, tolerance, alcohol tolerance, and then just keep sweetening it until I like the taste of it, and then I bottle it. And I bottle it still, also like this. So I will have maybe a little bit more of this, and then probably put the cork in and put it back in the fridge and have it another time and finish this beer. But uh, excellent work, Tracy. Thanks for bringing these over. Nice to meet you, and uh, see you guys later.